I want to, I guess I give a title to this message, be eyewitness, eyewitness. The reason I'm bringing this message is that we are in a day that many people are leaving the faith. I don't know if this is true or not, but I'm going to say it. But there's a lot of churches just closing down. And someone said 11 churches a day is closing down. Now, I don't know if that be true, but I know one thing, and I've been in the work of God for a long time. People that used to sit right there where you sit are now back in the world, and they left God. And, and that shows me that we're in the last days. Or one of the things that show me that we're in the last days. You have to have, thank you, Charles. You have to have a reference point. If you notice people uh, surveying, they're surveying out here, by the way. And the guy had put the stake right out there in our backyard there at the church. And that's his reference point. And from that reference point, he goes out and makes his lines and he'll know exactly where the road will be. So I want you to see that, put your stake down. The Word of God is your stake. God Himself is your stake. The Word of God is it. So when you go out, if you're measuring, let's say this, if you're measuring for a house, you drive the stake down on your lot. All right? All right, 35 foot that way, let's say, and 35 foot back this way, 25 foot that way, 25 foot that way. The reference point, from there is your reference point. That's where you'll square it off, and that's where your house would be. And it doesn't move, and your house will always be there. So we need a reference point. We need that stake driven down in our life that we are 100% committed to Jesus Christ. Because if you read the Bible, and I know you do, or I hope you do, I know some of you do, but I'm not sure about some folks, but... I encourage you to read your Bible, but you go into the scriptures and you read about the, the, the Jews. God picked the Jews for a job. They were, as a nation, they were supposed to spread the gospel around the world. But they didn't do it. And it talks about so much unbelief in the Jewish people. Even in the New Testament, you'll see about people that have unbelief. They once believed, but they don't believe anymore. And see, that's the devil's job, is to trick you up and deceive you. And I guarantee you, many of you have people in your family that are astray. Oh, they might not be robbing banks, but they're not serving God, and you know that. Is that not true? I wonder if you dare raise your hand, don't do it. But I know in many of your situations, I know already know it. Well, I'm not going to get panic about that. If nobody serves the Lord, my stake is driven. How about yours? All right. You got to be that committed because we live in a day when husbands are leaving wives, wives are leaving husbands, everything you can imagine. And I know the heartbreak and I know the shame many times you feel because of that. But keep your stake driven. Don't go too far from that stake. Always come back and realize that's the center right there. Israel, Israel, Jerusalem is in the center of the earth. It all started over there. You understand that? It's all started over there and it's going to end over there. The cross is our reference point. That's our stake. We have driven down. Right over there, Christ was crucified. In Jerusalem, or outside of the city of Jerusalem, on Mount Olive there. And he's going to come back, and he's going to land right there in the center of the earth. He was born over there. He preached over there. And he's going to come back over there. And he's going to rule the world from over there. Yeah. When he comes back, he's coming as King of kings and Lord of lords. Yeah. So that's our reference point. The cross of Christ. We're not going to alter and and falter and go too far from that. We come back to the cross and realize it was at the cross that our victory was won. You're not fighting for victory. You have victory. If you have faith, you have victory. Now there's going to be some bumps along the way. We all know that. What's new? 
Be like David, oh, so why are thy cast down? Start naming what the Lord has done, you know, amen. Now, our first scripture is going to be found in John 20, verse 30 and 31. Let's put that up on the board. There are also many other signs and miracles which Jesus performed in the presence of disciples which are not written in this book right here. So many things that Jesus did is not written in this book. But many things are. There's enough written in this book to keep our anchor connected to the cross. Next verse. But these are written. Everybody say, but these are written. But these are written. Recorded in order that you may believe. Are you listening? Yes. You're going to have people come to you. It, it, some of your kids go into college. You better check them out. Because some of the teachers in those colleges don't believe in God and they will wreck your child's faith. I'm talking about professors. Yeah. Professor Snotbottom. <laughs> That's what I want to call them. <laughs> they'll wreck your child's faith. How do you know that the Bible is right? Oh, my goodness. That's what we're going to talk about this morning. These are written or recorded in, and re recorded in order that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one, the son of God. And that through believing, through believing, through believing and cleaving to and trusting and relying upon him, you may have life through and in his name and through who he is. Nail it down. Nail that down. Nail that down as a reference point. Nail that down where the cross is. Let's look at it again. Let's get that down in our soul. Somebody asks you a question. You say, why don't you read the Bible and believe it? And if you do, you will know because he'll come into your heart if you truly repent and believe. But these are written. Why are they written, Lord? Why are they recorded? In order that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one, the Son of God, and through believing, through believing, cleaving to and trusting and relying upon Him, you may have life through Him. You may have life through Him. Nail it down. Because there'll be things that's going to happen in your life That'll make you want to wander this way or wander that way. You'll hear people talk and they'll share and they'll do all of that. That's why it's so important to get into Word. I encourage you to read it every day. In fact, I encourage you to, to drink water every day. Susan reminds me, have you drank your water? No. So she'll bring me a glass of water. Because she wants me not to faint. <laughs> and if we don't drink of the water of the word, we'll faint. And it's not that I'm being mean. I'm just telling you truth from my own experience. And I See, I believe. See, man has a will. People don't understand. God has given man a will, volition, power of choice. We can believe or not believe. Choice is yours. I like what Joshua says. As far as me and my house goes, we're going to serve the Lord. I don't care what the next door neighbor does. I tell you, I thank God for a woman that anchored her soul to the cross. Because when I married her, I had it all up here, but I didn't have it in my heart. Ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. I'll smoke my cigars, drink my liquor, and, and, and uh, eat possum stew. And nobody ain't going to tell me I can't. How many's been there? Don't, I don't want to see. I know. I know the human element. I know the human heart. Because I know my heart. You say, how you know your heart? God has showed it to me. Ugly. <laughs> but you know, he cleansed it. Saved me. Sanctified me. And made me holy. I, 
I'm not bragging on myself. I'm bragging on what the Lord has done. The reason I'm here is not because of Bob Tilton. It's because God has ordained it and has kept me all these years to stay on the front line. And I've seen them fall to the left. And I've seen them fall to the right. I've seen them give up. I've seen them leave the church. I've seen all of that. Me praying and doing everything Susan me can to try to keep them in the faith. And they still walked away and walked out in unbelief. If I told you some of the names of the people used to come here and I tell you where they are at, they in the boondocks. You'd be surprised. <coughs> so what I'm trying to stress this morning is that we realize that we got eyewitnesses and these things have been written down. Let me ask you a question. If the, If the president wanted to t uh, say something to us, you think he'd just come down here and, and, and tell you individually? No, he'd write a letter. It's written. And he would send it down through the proper channels to it got to us. And then I would probably stand up or let Charles or somebody else, uh, Frank or whoever, whatever, stand up and read it. But where is he? Well, these things have been written that you might know the heart of the president. And the president wants you to know these things, that he wants you to be a good American, be strong, be brave, be courageous. Hard times are here, but I'm your president and I'm doing everything I can for you to make it okay. But he wouldn't come down here personally and tell everybody. Well, I think God should have that respect. He sent his word. To heal us. He sent his word. He's telling us in his word. But your job is to believe that it's from God. You have a will. You say, well, I don't believe. Well, don't believe. You're not going to bother me. You're not going to blow me out of the boat. I'm anchored to the cross. I've had people come up to me and write in my face and tell me. And, and while they were telling me there was a spitting and a spatting. And I let them spit and spat. And when they shut their mouth up, I begin to spit and spat. Let me tell you something, brother. I got a personal, personal, personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. I marveled those first Christians. They didn't have the New Testament. How many understand that? They didn't have the New Testament. They had the Holy Spirit and they had the, the, uh, the, the Old Testament. They preached from that. And from that, the New Testament, as they walked it out each day, came into being. And we got more to anchor our soul to today than ever before. Make your mind up. Yeah, I know the, 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 the glamour of the world. Sin is pleasant. Oh, sin is pleasant for a while. We all know that. Yippee dippy doo, a yappy dappy die, drink it up to the brim. Word the door. I, don't, I can drive. Where's the steering wheel? I don't want to make some of you homesick. How many how many's been around and when you were lost? What, what, did, what, what did you all do? Stick around and, and raise tulips? How many went to the honky tonk? Don't see your hand. Look, look at all, look at all those hands. When I was in the Air Force, you know what we dreamed about? Missy, we dreamed about going to the honky tonk. I know we'd meet a girl like her there. <laughs> well, I never done that. Well, I got news for you, honey. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You might have not went to the honky tonk, but I'm going to leave that before I get in trouble. But you inherit that old sin of Adam, and it's all about me. If it ain't about me, I don't want to play. How many's ever had kids like, or new kids like that when you were a kid, they wouldn't play? Look at the hands going. Uh, you, who was one of them? Let's see your hand. <laughs> I believe 
It has been written. And my life has been changed by the Spirit of the living God and by these principles in the Word of God. So these things have been written. Turn to Luke 1, Luke 1, verse 1 and 4. Luke 1. Luke 1, starting with verse 1 through 4. Here we go. Starting with 1. Luke 1, 1 through 4. Since we as well know, many have undertaken to put in order and draw up a thorough narrative of the surely established deeds which have been accomplished and fulfilled in and among us. So people, look, he, he investigated everything. He talked with people that I witnessed, talked to Peter, talked to the disciples. And he drew up a narrative. Go to the next verse. Exactly as they were handed down to us by those who from the official beginning of Jesus' ministry were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word that is the doctrine and concerning the attainment through Christ of salvation in the kingdom of God. Now just, let, just let that get through your mind. Read that. Study that. Let that be a reference point. Drive a stake exactly there. Now, these people are either lying or they're not. That's simple. It ain't a whole bunch of things you got to figure out. Either the Word of God is true or it's not. And we have a decision to make. Well, I'm one that believes and have experienced what the Word of God says. Many times I've experienced the presence of God. That's my personal testimony. God has walked with me for all these years, over 50 years. He's walked with me. He's never let me down. He's proven himself more and more and more than ever. Oh, I've heard the voice of God. This building is here. This land was procured because God spoke to me on a Sunday afternoon. Susan washing the dishes. I said, honey, dry your hands. Let's go. God is speaking. What is he saying? I don't know. All I know is he's speaking for us to go somewhere. Got in the car over there in Hanahan. Didn't know where we were going. We just drove all the way down. Went all the way up Yaman Hall Road. On around. All the way around. Here we come out here to Boondocks. And stop, and stop. And there's a sign on the pine tree over there. Susan still got the sign. For sale. Well, here we are. He told me to build the building. We built the building. On and on and on and on. I could, I, I can share how God spoke to us and we obeyed. Simple things like I'm sitting over in my office. I just get up. I don't know why I got up. I got on my golf cart and started down the road, went down the road, and come all the way about right there. I usually go down my driveway, and God spoke. He said, go across the lawn and look for the snake that bit Susan two years ago. But prior to that, we had prayed that God would lead us, or lead me, not us, because Susan didn't want no part of that snake, lead me to find that snake and kill that snake. So you say, oh, it's just a coincidence. A coincidence, proper time, the exact moment I went across there and went zigzag and come up, the snake is here and I come up just like that, right in front of my golf cart. Now just think of the, of the, the timing of that. I could have been three minutes later, the snake could have been gone. But see, God speaks. God is real. He's not somebody up there. He's not an image, a, a, a wooden image. He's a spirit being. He's alive. He's got...
this. He's got power. He talks to his children. And one of the biggest jobs you'll ever learn is to learn to listen to the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you'll be doing things you don't know why you're doing, but after you do it, you say, wow, that was God. Look at this one. <clears throat> About uh, a month after that, we drove up in the backyard. It was getting dark. I always get out of the car first. Always. But I was doing something. Susan gets out of the car, shuts the door, and she's walking. And all of a sudden, by the Spirit, she saw a snake. Look, the car is here. By, in the Spirit, she saw a snake over there. And I was fixing to get out. And she said, Bob, watch out. There's a snake. She saw the snake in the spirit. See, we serve a God that's not dead. So, you see? But there's a principle that you keep your mind on the Lord and you just walk with God daily. It ain't no hard thing to do. But the devil's throwing all this garbage at us and we're thinking about this, thinking about that, or that person did this, or that person didn't do that. Listen, that's carnality. Get your mind off of that. Get your mind on the Lord. I said, get your mind on the Lord. Yeah. It's a whole new life. The devil has set you up to worry about there's not enough money coming in for the rent. I understand that. Oh, this is going to happen. Oh, that's going to happen. All of a sudden, you're fearing something that's never going to happen. But, you, but your emotions, your, 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 your body picks up all that negative, And we wonder why we have... Some of the sicknesses that we have. Right. See, living the Christian life is a carefree life right. because you're trusting God. Yeah, you're human. I know you're human. I'm human. I know what it is to struggle and to fight and, and toil. But I have learned. I have learned. Like Paul says, I have learned to be content with whatever state that I find myself in and enjoy the Lord, enjoy in life. And being able to share the gospel. Listen, I've been through the contract machine more than probably any of you have in this place. Maybe other than Frank and a few others, but I've been shot at, I've been spit, I've been told to go to hell, I've been told everything. I've had phone calls in my house blessing me out. Susan's had phone calls. If you, don't, if you don't take your clothes off, we're going to kill your daughter. She's right here with us. This is what preachers have to put up with. Awful quiet in here. People deserting me. I'm trying to do the work of God and they just desert me. No loyalty. But that's part of the last days. Let's move on now. <coughs> Next verse. It seems good and desirable to me, and so I have determined also, after having searched out diligently, catch it, and followed all things closely and traced adequately the course from the highest to the, min, min, the minutes, what is it, pronounce that for me, the smallest detail from the very first to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theopolis. This is it right here in Luke. So we're dealing with people that have searched these things out, that seen the Lord, that was there. We're not believing some myth. Peter says that. We're not talking about some myth. We're talking about what we have seen with our own eyes. We're talking about what we have touched with our own hands. On and on and on I go, this Bible is full of witnesses. Why God himself spoke to heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That's good enough for me, a Professor Hyman Harupa Sniper. Or whatever your name is, Snooper, same as Hyman Hooban. Bob, are you trying to be funny? I'm just expressing myself like I'm all by myself and you're not out there. Always trying to bring unbelief in people's hearts and minds. Go to school and they want to tell you, well, there's no God. Well, Paul dealt with all that. If I had time, I'd go through the scriptures with you. I mean, we'd be here all day. But I'm telling you right now, they're without excuse. 
We've got one more verse. Let's go to the next verse. Four. My purpose is that you may know the full truth and understand. Don't, don't miss that now. With certainty and security against error, the account, history, and doctrine of the faith in which you have been informed and in which you have been orderly instructed. Boy, get that in your mind. Read that again. Mm -hmm. My purpose. What is your purpose, Luke? Is that you may know the full truth. Yes. It's right in this word. Don't alter from it. Stick with it. Because a lot of people have problems with unbelief. I don't have many scriptures on it, but I've got a few here. <laughs> Let me just read this. Isaiah 65, 2. Put it up there. Sixty-five two. Isaiah 65, 2, verse 2. You have spread out my hands all the day long to the rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good after their own thoughts. Let me tell you where the battle is. Anybody want to tell me where the battle is? Right between these two ears. Right there is the battlefield. You'll lose the war or you'll win the war by how you treat your thoughts and deal with your thoughts. The Bible says our job is to cast down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Cast that thought down. Somebody says, Bob, I got all these thoughts. Simple, not complicated. Welcome to the group. Welcome to the fight. We all have thoughts up there. Cast them down. They don't line up with the word of God. That's our stake. Cast them thoughts down. God don't love you. Cast that down. For no greater, than, uh, no greater love that a man can have than for him to lay down his life for a friend. That's what God did for every one of us. Amen. Cast those thoughts down. Amen. I'm better than everybody else. Cast that down. Yes. I'll never make it. That's a lie. Cast it down. Amen. I have fear. That's from the enemy. God's not giving us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Quit claiming it. Start claiming power, strength, anointing. Drive your stake down. That's what your job is. That's what my job is. Wow. Notice what God's I have spread out my hands all the day long. Those that are rebelling people. Notice who walk in a way that is not good after their own thought. And yet God's right there say, come unto me all ye that are heavy laden. Amen. You know, I just got to speak the truth. And I don't want to hurt nobody. And I'm not here to hurt anybody. But I've heard this. And I'm sick and tired of it. But nevertheless, I love the folks. I've had people come to me. I don't love my wife any longer. Boy, if I could speak street language, you'd hear something. <laughs> Boom! You made a vow before God Almighty. He'll hold you to that vow. Amen. Now, I know there's things that happen and all that. I might get into that. I understand that. I've dealt with probably more people than in, in this area than you, you've ever seen. But I'll tell you one thing. Don't give me that lip that you don't love that your mate no longer. You're commanded to love her. Amen. And if you don't love your wife, your prayers will not get answered. Amen. And people can look the other way. They can look up or down any way they wanted to. But that's truth. Yes. Well, I don't love my husband anymore. Bull. Repent. Repent. You know, we always think that the grass is greener on the other side of the mountain, don't we? Let me tell you something. The water bill is too. The water bill is too. In fact, we're commanded to love one another. Well, I can't go to that church anymore because I don't like so-and-so. He gets in my face. and 
bull. What comes up out of you when he gets in your face? Oh, love. It better. If anything else comes up, that's a test to show you what you got inside. All these things that happened to us to find out how much insecurity we really got. Listen, I've been there. I've been there many times. I face these things every day. I face more temptation than you've ever get, could think of. I remember one time I was teaching a seminar and everything. And this woman jumped up and grabbed me and held hold on to me. And, and I'm like this, you know. And I said, Susan, where are you, darling? <laughs> I understood the woman. She just wanted somebody to hold her, somebody to love her. But Susan wouldn't allow it, so I, you know. <laughs> We can understand how many really want somebody. I mean, just talk. Come up here, Susan. Let's show them how to do it. I think we just got to show them how to do it. Don't you, darling? Yeah, but right there. I mean, I mean, how many like to be hugged like this? I'll turn you loose if you turn me loose. <laughs> so you go around the house all day like this, frying eggs, cooking. <laughs> Changing the people's, the baby's diapers. Man, put it on me if you're going to hug me, man. Don't you know that? I'm scared. And I'm 82 years old. She's 81. We got more spark in us than a lot of people do in the church. When she walks by me, sometimes my eyes go like that. We ain't dead. We alive. I... I some of you are not ready for this. I can tell that right now. <laughs> All together now. <laughs> All right. Eyewitness. Eyewitnesses. The Bible's full of it. Turn to 2 second, second Peter chapter 1, verse 16. Second Peter. That's in the Bible. All right, listen to what Peter says. Now, this is important. When you have your doubts, doubt your doubts. Amen? For we were not following cleverly devised stories when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty, grandeur, authority of sovereign power. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Are you going to believe Peter? Or are you going to believe some dude in college that claims to be uh, Professor Hyman Strymon, him and Hyman, Reuben Diamond? Huh? So you've got to make a choice. Our young people have got to make a choice. But see, all of this shows us that we are in the last days because the Bible says many shall leave the faith. Now they had to be in the faith to leave it. Leave the faith and give heed, catch it, give heed to seducing spirits. Now listen to me, church. This is why it's so important to be under authority to be right with God, because when we alter and walk out of that umbrella of protection, the enemy is going to bombard you, give you temptations upon temptations. That's just the way it is. We fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. That's the way it is. These spirits are constantly warred against your mind. 
And you can tell people. Look at, look at some of our, the children that we have. They're opposing the Holy Spirit. In your own experience, in your own family. Come on, let's tell it like it is, Bob. I believe it will. In your own experiences, you have kids that, well, they say, and they, they'll, they come to church once in a while just to pacify you and, and, and keep on your pay, and stay on your payroll. And you cut the money off and they, they will leave real quick like. The Bible says you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. Next verse. For when we, he was invested with honor and glory, when he, that is Christ, with honor and glory from God the Father. Now wait a minute. And a voice was born to him by the splendor, majesty, glory in the bright cloud that overshadowed him, saying, this, who's talking there? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and delight in. That's testimony enough for me. That's eyewitness enough for me. When God himself speaks from heaven and says, listen, Jesus Christ is my beloved son. And there's whole religions that say that God don't have no son. But that's all according to the last days. Next verse. We actually heard this voice bored out of heaven. We, who, who's we? Peter, James, John, the disciples. Now they're either the biggest liar in the world or they're telling the truth. Now we got to make a decision. Well, I, we've all made ours years ago, but some folks are wavering in their faith. And that calls for us to pray, just like Rose said. You pray and you pray. In fact, you live a life of prayer. But in the process, you'll get stronger and get stronger. We were talking about this morning about having confidence in God, a guarantee, an agreement that God will do what he says. I have no doubt in my mind. Let me tell you something. Abraham, way before he was circumcised, way before the law was given, believed God. Yes. Believed God's word. I said, believe God's word and it was counted unto him as righteousness. He believed God's word. That's what it says. Yeah. I believe God's word. Yeah. And it's counted unto us as righteousness. Simple, not complicated. God imparts his righteousness to us. And now we are his children and we've been righteous by him. And I'm not going to call God a liar. Ooh, Bob, did you have to say that? How many caught that? Huh? Don't call what I have declared righteous, unrighteous anymore, Peter. Bob, don't call yourself unrighteous anymore. I've cleansed you with the blood of my son. I've showed you the greatest love in the world. Now you believe my word. And you'll come out a lot of this fuzzy, dozzy, hoopy, deepy, doppy, doopy. So somebody say, I love you, Pastor Bob. You have such a beautiful way of expressing yourself. How many know what I'm talking about? That's true. Let me tell you something. If I'm wrong, I'll, I'll say I'm wrong. Don't I, darling? But I'm very seldom wrong, right? <laughs> That's what God wants to hear. And God has made provisions. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We actually heard this voice bored out of heaven. We were together with him on the holy mount. Next verse. And we have this prophetic word made firmer still. This prophetic word. You will do well to pay close attention to it and less attention to Professor Hyman, Riemann, Simon, Blumen. Well, what would you call him? What would you, yeah, what would you call him? Professor Hyman, Riemann, Simon, Hyman, Newman. 
That's pretty close. That's good enough. <laughs> you will do well to pay close attention to it. To what? This firmer word. This word. The word of God. God cannot lie. This is where we anchor our soul to. We don't move from this position. I don't care how our emotions and our feelings are. We stand firm on what God has said. And let the firecrackers go. We do well to pay close attention to it as a lamp shining in a dismal, squalid, and dark place until the day breaks through the gloom and the morning star rises, comes into being in your hearts. And that'll just clear all that other darkness out. And the light of God will come in and we'll be cleaned and we'll be able to walk with God. It won't be no doubt in our mind. I want you to turn now, if you will, to 2 Corinthians. Don't have much time. Let's start with verse 11. 2 Timothy 3, verse 11. Second Timothy, chapter three, verse eleven. What did I say? Huh? Well, I was close. It's all in the same Bible. <laughs> Forgive me, Father. Hey, and I just started. I just finished preaching. I don't make no mistakes. <laughs> Aren't you all glad you got a real human pastor? <laughs> You got a real human pastor. I bleed too when you cut me, believe me. All right, here we go. Persecution, suffering such as occurred to me at Antioch, at Aconium, or whatever, and, and at Lydia, persecution I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Look at it. Don't think you were going to be busy, just not going to, we're going to, you know, but you know what? When you're grounded and rooted in God, you can go through those difficulties smiling. You might be hurting on the inside, but you're smiling on the outside. Right. But on the other hand, you might be smiling on the inside and frowning on the outside. Mm -hmm. So what's new? Oh, Bob, I'm suffering. What's new? <laughs> Paul says, it occurred to me in Antioch, and we'll stop there. <laughs> Next verse. But the Lord delivered me. How many times the Lord's delivered us? Come on, raise your hand. So many times. Don't doubt the Lord, doubt your doubt. Indeed, all who delight in piety and are determined to live a devoted and godly life in Christ Jesus will meet with persecution, will be made to suffer because of their religious stand. Hello, church. Come on now, we're not going to faint. It doesn't matter if I disappear. I'll see you in heaven. I read the end of the book. See, as long as we let fear of death bind us, we'll be a coward. People that we meet on the street just go right up to them and start talking to them about Jesus. You know, you know, you can crack the, 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 the atmosphere by... You know what they call a camel? It's been hidden, 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 in, hidden, 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 hidden in the desert. <laughs> no, and I don't care. Okay, I just wonder. <laughs> I think I've only had two people that never really laughed and enjoyed, and we've given out hundreds of them. The other day we went to Hardy's. I didn't want to go. <laughs> but, you know, Susan's got it. Okay, darling. Here we come, Hardy. Easy, darling. We're going to Hardy. So I, what we, she ordered a hamburger and french fries and iced tea. And, of course, just to be courteous to her, I ate the whole thing. She ate hers. I got up and I talked with two people at a table, found out they were Christians. So I told them my Campbell joke. And they threw me out. So anyway, <clears throat> we got outside and this young boy, about 19 years old, I started talking to him and I told him the Campbell joke. I tell you, he laughed. I thought he'd never stop laughing. 
I said, well, hey, cool down. I got two more I want to tell you. <laughs> so I told him the other two, you know, and he laughed and laughed. He said, I got to tell my friend. That's great. That's great. <laughs> didn't he, honey? I mean, yeah, huh? They didn't hear you, huh? Yeah, y'all heard that. Yeah, okay. And then I said, I forgot what I said. Oh, I told him, yeah, I told him that on the back of that, he could connect to our computer, you know, and, and 160 messages, anything he wants to know. And he's thanking everything. So I, got, I went in the car, got in the car, and Susan stayed there talking. And next thing you know, Susan turned around, she did like this. You see, I know what that means. That means get here now. So I went, shoo, I got there. I said, you know what is it? This young man wants to accept Jesus. I said, well, that's no problem. So I preached the gospel to him. He accepted Christ. We paid for him. I said, paid for him. Prayed for him. And I said, do you have a Bible? My mama does. Well, I knew she was praying for that boy. She's got a Bible. I mean, he didn't stand a chance. So I went in the car. I had just bought some new Amplified Bibles. I come out, I give him one. I said, I told him where to start reading and everything. And it was awesome. But see, two is better than one. And if one doesn't do the job completely, the other one will come in and make it right. So that's why Jesus sent them out one by one. Huh? Huh? Two by two. Two is better than one. Now I'm going to read this and we're going to close. Finish this. Go to the next verse. Real quick, we'll read them right on down the line here. But wicked men and imposters will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and leading astray others and being deceived and led astray themselves. Hello, Professor Hyman Ryman, Human Hyman. Next. But as for you, shield of faith, continue to hold to the things that you have learned and of which you are convinced, knowing from whom you learned them. Next. Amen. And how from your childhood you have had a knowledge. And now Paul's talking to Timothy. He's the childhood there. And many of you, your kids are learning from, from youth uh, being young. Acquainted with the sacred writings which were the Old Testament, which are able to instruct you and give you the understanding for salvation, which comes through faith in Christ Jesus, through the leaning of the entire human personality on God in Christ Jesus, in absolute trust and wisdom and goodness. Next verse. Every scripture is God breathed. This is the word. Given by his inspiration. Yeah, man wrote it, but they were moved by the Holy Spirit to write what they wrote down. We understand that. Very important to understand that. And profitable for instructions, for reproof and conviction of sin. Now, if you read the Bible, the Lord shows you something. Thank him for it. Don't draw up in a knot. Oh my, I just keep it. That's what I used to do. But I say, thank you for showing me that, Lord. Now I know you're going to give me grace and more grace to overcome that tendency and all the others. Remember that in James 4, 6. He will give us whatever the Lord shows you. This morning as I preach, you want to see me in the message. Not me, but you. Say, I want to see me in the message. Yeah. And if you see that you're not lined up in one area, don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at the teacher, the prophet. Just say, oh, Lord, I humble my, I see that in my life. I see my big mouth has got me in a lot of trouble. And Lord, help me. Give me grace to overcome that. I have that tendency to stick my mouth in things that I shouldn't. Lord, forgive me. I mean, is that simple? It's not complicated. God has a way, way, made a way of escape. Just do it. And watch God work and do the work in you. All right, look at what it says. Correction of error and discipline in obedience. 
and for training in righteousness, in holiness, living in conformity to God's will and purpose and action. Wow, what a mouthful. The word of God. All right, next verse. So that the man of God may be complete and proficient, well fitted, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Well, we got the Bible. One more verse, 17. So that the man of God may be complete. Second Timothy 3, 17. There we go. So that the man of God may be complete and proficient, well fitted, and thoroughly equipped for every good work. Time's run out. Aren't you glad you made your decision? Yes, we live it in a day, the temptations. I mean, I can go back when I was a young boy. We never had the temptations like the young people have today. In fact, those temptations back there, when I look at it, wasn't even much of a temptation. I thought they were. But these kids today, everywhere they go, the whole, they can tap into things in Russia. They can tap into things what's happening in Mexico. They get on that little old uh, whatever it is, that, uh, or their or their or their uh, computer, tap right into the honky tonkies. Have you noticed that? Yeah, when I'm on a computer, the first I say, Lord, don't let my eyes see anything I don't need to look at. I pray thee, Lord, keep me clean. Because I, all I do is I go for, I listen to the people that preach prophecy, the word of God. I check out different words in, in, on my computer and stamp it out, run it off. And, but it's always notice this pretty girl over here. She has one sock on and one sock off. <laughs> well, I'm human. Susan comes behind me, taps me on the shoulder. What are you looking at? <laughs> Nothing. No, seriously, I have, I'm telling you the truth, I have got the victory in that. Amen. If I want to see the real thing, I'm married to the real thing. Amen. Let the good times roll. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> The bed is undefiled when you're married. That's right. So I had to run around with all that guilt. All right. You got your mind made up? Yes. Have you driven your stake where the cross is? Yes. And we're not going to move. No. Because God's depending upon us in these last days to get the gospel out to the multitudes. And we're doing that. We got close to 9,000 people that we've preached to on the internet. If you haven't tapped into our internet, tap into it. Learn what we're doing. All of us together. It ain't just me. It's all of us. All of our teachers. All of you that support the work of God here. We're getting the gospel out. What a job. We are fulfilling what Jesus said. That this gospel will be preached to all the nations, and then the end will come. So we are at a close time for the coming of the Lord, the rapture, the catching up of the saints. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you've talked to our hearts, and we thank you that our souls are anchored in Christ Jesus our Lord. And we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that you've given to us to bear witness to the world. And we thank you for the many opportunities that you give us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.